for me. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to Talking <Welcome>. Shop. <laughs> <laughs> We're here. We're the epistle edition mm-hmm. of Talking Shop. We're mm-hmm. here in which town? Beautiful. Beautiful. Kingman, Kingman, Arizona, Arizona. right on Route 66, the Mother Road. Come check us out here. Mm -hmm. But we are going to be walking through the first Sunday in Advent today. Romans 13. Romans 13, verse 8 through 14. Hopefully we can give you some ideas on uh, what you might do, or maybe you can decide you don't like anything we say and you don't do any of it. But that's your prerogative, so let's, let's do it. Yeah, let's get to it. The evil way. Spit out my Lord in every way, yet I'm still welcome. Well, welcome to the New Testament version of Talking Shop. Uh, we're in beautiful Kingman, Arizona. We're working on this. Uh, you, you know, so, so we read through Romans 13, 8 to 14. That's our one for Advent 1. Uh, what in the world does this have to do with Christmas, Adam? And your answer should be nothing. It has nothing to do with Christmas. (laughs) Nothing to do with Christmas. Because this is Advent 1. Right, because it's Advent. That's exactly right. It's not Christmas. It's not actually Christmas. Thank you very much. That's exactly (laughs) right. But no, but that's the truth, right? That's why the gospel lesson is the triumphant entry. Mm -hmm. That's why it, it. you're going, well, this isn't Christmas. No, it's not Christmas. It's Advent, which is much more akin to Lent Mm -hmm. than it is to Christmas. Yeah. Historically, it's always been a season of fasting and uh, preparation for the coming of the Savior. Right. Exactly. And so originally, like even the color was purple, just like Mm -hmm. it is in Lent. They Mm -hmm. made it blue because they want to sell more stuff or whatever it is. I don't know. (laughs) But so, so we come to this Romans 13 text, fabulous text right? Paul's stuff. And if you're doing the extra verses extra, it starts at verse eight, which talks about, it essentially starts with money. Yeah. I mean, honestly, money and, and, and virtue and those sorts of things don't owe anything to anybody else. Yeah. Right. Um, I find that fascinating that we start, I mean, if you're going to preach these new Testament texts, right? We start essentially with a stewardship text. Yeah. I mean, that's where it starts. This because this text is not about it's not about Christmas. It's not even that much about the second coming. It's about how do we live together. Not yet, anyway. Not yet, right? Yeah, yeah we'll get but there. How, how do we live together as Christians? Right. Yeah. I mean, it just is. So owe no one anything, right? Except, and then it talks about the law of love. Yeah, to, to love, love each, each other. other. Right. Right. Which, of course, this is written to the church. Mm-hmm. Right. This is third use kind of thing. Third right. use of the law. Exactly. Kind of thing. It's written written to, to brothers and sisters of the church, right? And it says, right, this is the fulfillment of the law. Mm-hmm. Right? All of, of course that's Jesus, right? That echoes he's just echoing Jesus from the New Testament. Yeah. Um, and and then of course he goes into verse nine. The commandments, right? You and, and he uses the second table stuff. Yep. Right? He's not talking about the first the first three, four commandments, depending on how you're counting it. Right. Uh, the relationship with guys talking about relationship with one another, right? This is where we have that. Or any of the commandments subbed up in the same word, just love your neighbor as yourself, right? So he continues to quote uh, Jesus. It's all those horizontal relationships. Right. Yep. Core mundo. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. And you could you could start the new church year there. Yeah. Right? It'd be, there's worse places to start than the reminder of what does it look like for us as a Christian community to love each other? What does it look like? Well, don't, any, don't owe anything to anybody else. What does that look like? Um, I mean, is it telling you you shouldn't get a home loan? I hope not. <laughs> I don't know how you buy a house in America without a home loan for yeah. the most part. Uh, unless you're really blessed or really lucky or whatever it might be. Uh, but if we keep focus on this talking to the church, right, the number one thing I would say that gets in our way of relationships, the number one thing that drives people away from the church, the number one thing that in my church council, meaning if there's going to be a fight, yeah. it's about money. Yep. <laughs> always. Always. Always, always, always. And so this idea of reminding our people, don't let this stuff get in the way of who we are. Yeah. Especially as we prepare for the coming of Christ. Yeah. Advent, it's a remembrance of the first coming, but it's also remember the second coming, right? And Thanksgiving was just a couple days ago. Right, right. right. Like literally, <laughs> right. like three days ago. If you're preaching this in 2022, this is November 27th. Correct. Yep. 
Correct. Thanksgiving just happened, mm-hmm. right? Or we're thankful for everything we have. Mm-hmm. And then we're like, mine, 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 mine. Right. All the money is mine. Mm-hmm. That's what we're going to fight about is mm-hmm. it's all mine, right? Mm-hmm. right. But it's not. Not even close. Yeah, it all comes down to that. The uh, the study I did with my men's group this this weekend from Lutheran Hour, that identity study. Oh yeah. Um, and that that's what this whole thing is. Is you know, owe it, owe no one to anything. Owe no one anything. Right. right. Because because you're in Christ, you like we do relationships different. Like if you, know, you you bought lunch a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think I paid you back for that. But I don't owe you anything, no. according to this. And right? I, don't, I don't expect you to. Right. If you did, that'd be awesome. Yeah. But I don't expect... You know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. It's a brotherly love kind right. of thing. We do that. We do things with each other and for each other <clears throat> simply because we can. Yeah. Right? If I have free. an advantage, I use it for your advantage. If yeah. you have an advantage, you use it for my advantage. It doesn't be financial. It can be anything. Right. Right. We use our advantages for each other. No, that's right. Because that's, I mean, that's verse 10, right, of this first section. Love does no wrong to the neighbor. That's why love is fulfillment of the law. Jesus makes it super simple for us. Paul mm-hmm. echoes that from Christ himself. Uh, and so it's good stuff. And and the beauty of it is this rolls really easy into the actual selection, which is 11, 12, 13, and 14, those four verses. Mm-hmm. Besides this, right, besides this truth about love being the fulfillment of the law and not owing each other, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. Yeah. And now we really roll into this idea of Emmanuel, God with us. He's coming back. Yeah. He came once, he's going to come again, you know, that idea. And we prepare for that first coming, to celebrate his first coming, because it reminds us of the second coming. Right. 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 You know, another thing that Paul's doing here, because he's quoting the Torah, right? He's he's bringing back the fact that the Old Testament matters. Mm -hmm. Those are the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So... Um, the the scriptures they were yeah they were a blessing for the Jews but how much more now for those of you who are Christians I I read an article on fifteen seventeen a couple days ago about this text in preparation for our mm-hmm. uh, our get together today and that's that was kind of the thrust of the beginning of that guy's article whoever it was sorry I don't didn't remember but it's okay look it up they got a lot of good stuff yeah a lot on. lot of good stuff for the for this text on there but. Um, you know, the, the scriptures are a blessing to us. Right. And so through the fulfillment of the scriptures, Jesus, that's what Advent's about, right? The, the Old Testament fulfilled and they waited and now we await. Right. No, that's 100% right. Yeah. And, and it, of course, it's echoing back to Deuteronomy. It's mm-hmm. echoing back to Exodus and, mm-hmm. and all of those great texts uh, where, the, where they get the law. Mm-hmm. Um, but we know the time. Why? Because salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. Yeah. Which sounds pretty pretty prophetic, but at the end of the day, well, yeah. I mean, it's nearer now than when we started this podcast, right? right. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. just yeah. by you know, just by nature of, of being alive, it's nearer now than right. Than that, before. That's how time works. Right. <laughs> In general, right? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and 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 now I think actually verse twelve is. I mean, I, I didn't get to sit on the pericope meetings, but I think this is where we get <laughs> why this is connected, verse 12, yeah. right? For night is gone, the day is at hand, right? This darkness light motif. Mm-hmm. I, I think you could probably use that, if you're going to preach this text, you could use that light, dark motif all yep. the way through. How, how the darkness deals with, with stuff, how the light deals with stuff. Yeah. Uh, how the kingdom of God handles things versus how the kingdom of the world <clears throat> handles something. You know, the kingdom, kingdom of the world cheats and lies and steals and, and robs and covets. And, I mean, mm-hmm. that, and that's okay. Yeah. What does it matter? Right? What does it matter? We, we get to, to verse 13, and just not to jump ahead too much, but walk properly, right? Not, not in orgies, drunkenness, immorality, sensuality, quarreling, jealousy. You know, all these things that, that the world says is okay. Um, my wife at her previous job, uh, one of the one of the gals literally just got released a few weeks ago because she had, they call it an OnlyFans account. I actually saw that news article. <laughs> and she's a school teacher. Yeah. And it's like, how do you reconcile? There, there has to be. There's got to be some sort of a, of a moral, uh, some sort of a standard. Yeah. Right, and for us Christians, right, if you're not a Christian, the Good darkness luck. is at hand, right? right. Whatever, you know, do whatever you want, who cares? Right. But as a Christian, how do you deal with 
life, we have a different set of rules. Yeah. We have a different set of things we play by. Yep. Uh, and they're real clear. They've always been really clear. We call them the Ten Commandments, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. And, and the Ten Commandments were true long before they were ever written down. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, yeah, they built, were effective. Built in. It's built into who we are as human beings. God didn't have to say, you need to love me more than other things for that to be true. Right. Right. God didn't have to say, if you have an affair on your wife, right, it's going to hurt your marriage relationship. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's Who'd like thunk that. it? Right. Who'd have thunk? Right. So we have this great time, right? Verse 11, it's time to wake up. Salvation is nearer now. Uh, verse 12, the night is gone. The day is here. Right. And cast off all this other stuff. And then we get this language that... Paul's super famous for the armor of light yeah. stuff, right? Ephesians is going to talk about putting on the full armor of God. <laughs> Ephesians? Yeah, or Galatians, one of the two. I forget. I'd have to look it up. Armor of God? Yeah, the armor Ephesians. of God stuff Ephesians. is Ephesians, yeah. And so this idea, Ephesians 6, I think, or something like that. Um, but put on the full armor of God. And this is, the, this is what he's talking about, the armor of light, right? The armor mm -hmm. of truth, the armor mm -hmm. of stuff that, that we talk about, right, in the daytime. Not orgies and drunkenness, sexual morality and sensuality, quarreling and jealousy and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. Because those marks, I mean, if you want to see what kills a church, those are the, especially the, the few at the end, right? Mm -hmm. Quarreling, jealousy, right? Those two, gossip, he could probably throw that in there too. Yeah. yeah. All those, and you could talk about those things of the darkness, right? If you're doing this dark to light, you could do that transition back and forth in your sermon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, so I like, as I'm looking at this right now, 12 and 14, right? That that's a bookend on that other on verse 13. Yeah. Put on the armor of light. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And so, what does that look like? Right. That's what 13 is all about. Yeah. And that that word is so cool. That Greek word. <laughs> we didn't we didn't talk too much about it when we were doing our translating. But it's literally the word for take off one thing and put on a coat. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if you can hang a Jesus coat around you, you know, what, yeah. whatever yeah. that looks like. Yeah, like the, put on or even Jesus. more passively, uh, yeah. to you are take allow yourself to be stripped of what you had before. Yeah. And to be clothed then with Christ, with Good. with the armor of light. Yeah. Be be clothed in <clears throat> as Adam always reminds us, right, in the promises of our baptism. Be clothed yeah. in the yeah. promises of of communion be clothed in that actually was where i was going to go was galatians 3. yeah do it come on yeah. go, for as many of you have been baptized into right. christ have put right. on christ right. yep have in what is that word in duo you know the, yeah the being put on right and it's just like yeah it's, it's, so it's this depth of of this focus <clears throat> as we move into the penitential season of advent of, of taking off the other, putting on the one. And it's funny because he comes back all the way around in verse 14, put on Christ and then leave the flesh off, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. leave, leave all that other stuff off. That, because don't, even if somehow you could, and I'll just use this, even if somehow you could justify, let's say your use of online pornography or whatever it is, this text will tell you, <laughs> right? Yeah. That yep. that's that's a that's a, a fleshly thing. Don't gratify it. Yeah. Don't gratify it because yeah. it doesn't help you. Yeah. Right? It's breaking your relationship with God, it's breaking your relationship with other people. And that's just one example of stuff. Sure. Although he uses the whole orgies and sensuality stuff and all that as well. Yeah. Um, but it's just one example. Don't do the darkness stuff, do the light stuff. Yeah. I'd take the opportunity to say, hey, it's not do more, try harder here. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not, hey, yeah. like just stop trying to do the bad things and try really oh, hard to really do the good hard. things. Yeah. No, it's Although stop doing the bad really. things oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and put on Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and there's a world of difference between those two. Right. And in that putting on of Christ, the other stuff will happen. Yeah. Right. The other stuff's going to happen. Yep. Uh, right. Because that's who you are. Yeah. It's like it, I remind my people all the time, right? It's not go and do good works. No, right. Paul says that to walk in the good works that Christ has prepared for you in advance yeah. to do. Meaning they will happen. Right. The, the women's group at church is called Fruit Happens mm. um, <clears throat> from some study they did. But I like, I like that well, name. I, I like that right. phrase though, yeah. right? Fruit just happens. Mm -hmm. If you're in Christ, mm -hmm. you're going to bear fruit. Mm-hmm. 
Reminds me of a, the negative version of that one, right? <laughs> right, you know, yeah. it happens, you know, yeah. it does. And, yeah. and, but it's the positive version. No, that's fantastic. Anything else? No, I, I mean. Let's say uh, verses 11 and 12. Uh, salvation is uh, nearer to us now than when we first believed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the day is at hand. Mm -hmm. Or uh, that makes me think of John the Baptizer. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, right? Yeah. right? Jesus is here. Yeah. Right. right, yeah, and that and that, that could be your, your advent hook too, if you really wanted to, right? Yeah. You could, as you, between the darkness and the light, live in the light, why? Because Christ has come. Right. Boom, Emmanuel, God with us. And it's not your own righteousness, it's Christ's righteousness that covers you. His robe of righteousness covers you. Put on Christ. Yeah. Perfect. Well, depending on which gospel reading you choose for this Sunday, you got two options. You could use this text in conjunction with the gospel text. Um, the triumphal entry, mm -hmm. your salvation is at hand, right? right? Like you were saying, you could use that kind of John the Baptist motif of behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Mm -hmm. um, or your salvation is nearer now than it was when you first believed. And then no one knows the day that day or and hour, well, we don't know, but it's right. it's nearer now. Like you could use that as a, a repetitive hook within your sermon if you're going to preach the preach the gospel lesson as well. Yeah, I also have a tendency to lean towards catechetical preaching. Mm -hmm. So uh, verses eight through ten, right, walking through the commandments, right, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, right, and it's going back to love your neighbor and don't do any wrong against them. And pointing them back to Luther's explanation in the uh, small catechism of the Ten Commandments, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just don't murder, mm -hmm. but then positively mm -hmm. yeah. look out for your neighbor's physical well-being and his welfare. Yeah. Right. Right? Don't right. just, it's not just don't lust after your neighbor's stuff, but help your neighbor to keep and preserve yeah, his keep stuff. His, and even exactly. improve it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so awesome. it's, uh, right, the small catechism has this, follow the law and also love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Good. So I say preach Romans 13. Forget that gospel stuff. Right? No. <laughs> it's full of it. Hey, we hope this is helpful. We hope it's helpful on your preaching. Hope it helps you get some ideas, some ways to think about this. Uh, like, subscribe. We're, we're here. We're not going away, right? The New Testament, uh, we plan on being around. The Epistle hope, Edition. The Epistle Edition. We hope we can help you guys. Uh, comment on the bottom. We'd like to hear from you. We'd like to uh, have the conversation with you. Uh,